just a moment. Yeah. Recording in progress. Okay, can you hear me? And uh... okay, can uh, can you see my slide? Yes, uh, it is. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, thank you, organizers, for giving me this opportunity. I'm talking about the forward interruption in superconducting circuit. Uh, I'm a researcher working for NEC, and this work is done with. Uh, and first of all, uh, this work is uh, supported by the NEDO project that develops superconducting devices uh, in collaboration with uh, in AIST, uh, Tokyo Tech, Yokohama National University, and Waseda University. And uh, this is uh, uh, just a mock up. This picture is not mock up of the superconducting quantum energy machine, but anyway, we are trying. Uh, we are developing the actual hardware quantum annealing machine. But I just a moment. But I'm not talking about experiments and devices, uh, but talking about this associate topic for theoretical study of associate topic. Uh, my main topic is related to the LHC architecture. Uh, some presentation in this conference uh, on this architecture. So you know, this is a candidate for a good graph of qubits for quantum annealing or some gate-based quantum computation. And the uh, parity of multiple logical qubits are encoded in each physical qubit. Uh, the good point is it does not need couplings of distant physical qubits, but forward interruption is needed, like this Hamiltonian uh, with the uh, aging spin variables, S, uh, it takes one more minus one, and uh, if the product of the four spin S is equal to one for any plackets, uh, like the square, like the four spins in the square, uh, S uh, is mapped to the product of logical spin sigma. Uh, and at low temperature for large C, uh, this condition, the product of four spins equal to one is satisfied. So the ground state of H LHC Hamiltonian for large C is mapped to that of logical Hamiltonian. So this is a great theoretical idea. But what about physical implementation? Uh, how do we realize the forward interaction and curious? Uh, the theoretical idea to implement the LHC architecture has been already proposed in the paper written by Pierre et al. And where qubits based on Josephson parametric oscillators are used, uh, qubits based on the JPOs uh, is, are based on the cat states generated in a C shattered squid with a parametrically driven field. Uh, this is a schematic figure of the circuit for our JPO. And the two states of a qubit are encoded in the two coherent states of the cat state, like this figure that showed the regular function of the coherent state that has two, uh, sorry, the cap state that has two coherent states corresponding to uh, two states on the qubit. And proposed target for the four-way coupling of JPOs like this, uh, there are four JPOs corresponding to qubit, and the uh, coupler is a single Josephson junction. This is a coupler, and each JPO capacitively couples to the coupler via this capacitor. So this is a basic idea to implement the LHC architecture. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, we need a large coupling constant to realize the uh, LHC scheme. So how do we realize a large coupling constant? This is the aim of our study, to find a four-body couplers with a large coupling constant for the LHC architecture. Uh, and our study is theoretically examining four-body couplers uh, one is previously proposed one, shown in the previous slide. Uh, and we also explore other couplers. And the result is uh, we propose a generalized coupler and appropriate parameter settings. That coupler has an additional control knobs to increase the forward interaction. And the result gives a guideline for setting parameters to increase the forward coupling constant. First, I showed 
uh, coupler previously proposed, again, this has a single juxtaposition junction here, and each JPO has to be coupled to the JJ coupler, like beer, such cup stuff, like this. And our proposed coupler is like this. This is generalized version of the previous one. This has a C shunted two parallel branches of JJs, like this. The one branch has an identical JJs in series with uh, Jacobs energy EJG, denoted by EJG. And the other branch has a single JJ with smaller Jacobs energy than that of the, the other branch, first branch, with coefficient alpha that is smaller than one, like this. And uh, the important point is that we thread a half a flux quantum of external magnetic flux here in, through the loop uh, of the two branches like this. Uh, phi g is equal to phi 0 over 2 half of flux quantum. And each JPO capacitively couples to the JJ here this capacitance, this capacitance, capacitors, uh, as the previous one. And this coupler uh, includes a previous coupler for as an n equal 1 and alpha equal 0. This setting, uh, in this setting, the cu this coupler reduces to the previous one. And also, when alpha is equal to 1 over n, this fraction of the coupler is called quartum, uh, that is a special flux qubit. Uh, and this structure is used also for nonlinear two body coupler in this work. So we were inspired by this work and we apply this structure to the uh, four body coupling of JPOs with some little changes of the term parameters and setting. And we set alpha, parameter alpha close to 1 over n to increase the four body coupling constant. This is our strategy to increase the com coupling constant. And next, let me explain the potential of the, our proposed coupler, described like this function, V of phi, and the phi is the phase difference between the edges of the coupler, here and here, phase difference. Uh, and the phi g is a flux, uh, equal to a half flux quantum. And the first term is corresponding to the, this branch, uh, at, the, at the sum of the, uh, potential of the each uh, single Jacobson junction and the phase is divided equally like this uh, in some condition. I did not explain the details of that. Anyway, this first term corresponds to the, this branch. And the second term, of course, corresponds to the other branch like this. And the important point is phi g is equal to uh, half a flux quantum. So this product is pi equal to pi. So uh, this term becomes like this, a minus is changed to plus, and this is an important point. Uh, we expand this function like this up to the fourth of the term, and uh, EJG2, EJG4 uh, are for the coefficient of the second and fourth of the term, and they are expressed like this with n and alpha. So we can show the coefficients these coefficients by setting n and alpha. Uh, in particular, when n equals one, alpha equals zero, this corresponds to the previous original version of the coupler, uh, a single JJ. EJG2 is equal to EJG4. Uh, so uh, we can uh, make them to make them different from each other, different from each other by setting n and alpha like that. Next, let me uh, I'm, I explain, uh, uh, briefly explain the outline of derivation of the effective Hamiltonian for the forward interaction. The first step is the constructing Hamiltonian with charge and flux values like this. And the second one, second step is uh, we represent this Hamiltonian with bosonic operators. Uh, and then we obtain the total Hamiltonian uh, consisting of the sum of JPU Hamiltonian and the coupler Hamiltonian. And the second line corresponds to the interaction. Uh, AK dagger and AK are creation and annihilation operators, bosonic operators for JPOK. And AG plus AG plus dagger, AG minus AG minus dagger are uh, degrees of freedom for the coupler. Uh, the coupler has two edges, so the coupler has two degrees of freedom, but the uh, AG minus, uh, we only consider AG minus because the it uh, effectively plays a role of the interaction. 
Egypt. So we don't have to uh, focus on Egypt plus. Anyway, the coupling of the Hamiltonian, uh, a coupling of the JPO and the coupler is represented like this. And the third step is the transform to transform to the Hamil previous Hamiltonian to the Hamiltonian for probability interaction. Uh, interactions of each JPO and the coupler here such a cluster uh, transform to the probability interaction of JPOs. Uh, I don't explain the details of that, but anyway, we use some approximation like the rotating wave approximations. And uh, we assume that the coupling constant of JPLs and the coupler is small uh, for this coupling. And then uh, we obtain the effective total Hamiltonian uh, like this. Uh, that consists of the uh, Hamiltonian for each JPO, four JPOs, and the coupler, the Hamiltonian for the coupler, and the interaction. That is for the coupling. Uh, there are many other coupling, but we can uh, banish them by using rotating wave approximation. Uh, these terms have the rot oscillating terms, so we can ignore them. But uh, uh, I'm sorry, I did not explain that. But anyway, we set some uh, special relation of, of the frequency. Then this uh, following coupling term does not have the uh, oscillating factor, so uh, we keep these following coupling terms. And then this probability coupling correspond to the probability coupling of spins in the LHC Hamiltonian. So we obtain this Hamiltonian. So the probability coupling constant G4 is important for us. The, this is ex expressed like this. A G minus prime is effective coupling constant of a JPO and coupler. Here it is faster. And that depends on the parameters of JPO and coupler. And ECG prime is effective capacitive energy of the coupler uh, for this capacitance. And EJG4 and EJG2 are the coefficients of the second and fourth order term in the potential of the coupler shown before. And let me mention about the factors involved in the coupling constant G4. Uh, there are two main factors. Slides One is not coupling of Okay. Uh, no, can uh, you try once more? Just change the slides, try to change the slides. Or maybe you can stop sharing and then again share. Three? Uh, no, nothing is happening. So you can stop sharing and again share maybe. Does it work? Uh, it is still not coming. It is still not showing in the screen. You can try once more or uh, just uh, log out and log in. Oh, really? <laughs> just uh, try to share once more. Maybe. Okay. No. Yeah, maybe let me check. Recording stopped. Yeah, maybe you can uh, just uh, log out and log in and check once more. Uh, same meeting. Oh, okay. And Yes, can you share again? 
Uh, yeah, perfect. So. Uh, so. Recording in progress. So, yeah, you can try to change the slides also just to check. And uh, where, where should I resume? Uh, I guess the last slide was when you are showing the different couplings, this A, uh, AG plus minus AG minus uh, those Hamiltonian. This one? Uh, no. Uh, no. I just see only one four body coupling constant, only one slide. Uh, can you change the slides? Uh, uh, 15. Change. We are at 15. 15. Okay. So may I resume from here? Still here, nothing is changing. Uh, maybe you can try with the PDF or? Uh, uh, you mean the slides are not changing yeah. in your screen? Uh, we are just seeing the slide 19 and that's it, so. 19? Yeah. Uh, okay, right. So maybe there are these different window options in the when you shared the screen. Uh, Recording stopped. So, anywhere? He's trying to present like full screen. Yeah, so maybe if that doesn't work. Maybe if you can yeah. just present in a window. Right. Uh, full screen. I don't know. Maybe you can stop the full screen in case you are trying to do full screen. Just go to slide fifteen. Okay. This. Ah, uh, wow. Recording in progress. Excellent. Good. Yeah. But not. Ah, oh, thank you. Now I'm sharing. I, I'm supposed to share the screen page fifteen. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Fine. Okay. So I, I resume. Uh, okay. The anyway the yeah this is the total uh, Hamiltonian and I transformed that. That oh, so, sorry just uh, and the next page I'm sharing the next page and uh, this shows that transform the Hamiltonian to Hamilton for the Fourier interaction. Uh, like that, uh, it uses the, such a transformation uses the sum approximation, like rotating wave approximation, and or and the uh, assumption that the coupling constant of JPO and coupler uh, bear is coupled faster, it's small, and then we obtain the effective Hamiltonian, uh, including the probably coupling, like that, and. Uh, yeah, some other coupling, like the two-body coupling, vanishes with the, under the rotating wave approximation. But we can, sorry, I do not show that, but uh, uh, we set some uh, relation to the uh, frequencies, and then we can keep the uh, probability coupling term. Uh, this has no rot oscillating term. And then uh, these stars correspond to the probability coupling of the spins in the LHC Hamiltonian. So, yeah, this is our goal. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, and that. But the important point is the effective probability coupling constant. Uh, we try to set uh, to large. So, the G4 probability coupling constant is expressed like that. G minus prime is effective coupling constant of a JP and coupler that depends on parameters of JP and coupler. And ECG prime is effective capacitive energy of the coupler uh, for this capacity. And EJG4 and 2 are the coefficients of the second and fourth order terms of the potential of the uh, coupler. And let me mention factors involved in the coupling constant G4. Uh, there are two parts. One is coupling of each JP and the coupler, uh, characterized by G minus prime. And but it should be uh, we want it too large to increase the G4 G4, but it should be a small partition, not to strongly affect JP yield. 
so we do not it make we do not make it large. And so the other factor is nonlinear ideal coupler. Uh, one and this part and this is divided into two parts. One in capacitance of the coupler uh, related to the capacitive energy is C G prime, that is proportional to one over capacitance of the coupler denoted by C G. So and it should be small to increase G four. And the other part is the other one is the ratio of E J G four to E J G two two appear here, it should be large to increase G4. So, okay, so what should be done to increase G4? Uh, we have two strategies. One is uh, decreasing capacitance of the coupler. It can increase G4 without increasing G minus prime. So we satisfy two conditions. And uh, this is the uh, it showed the uh, result for this uh, strategy. The, this is for the uh, probably coupling constant for specific parameter values, and uh, we ch only changed CG. And so we uh, show the probably coupling constant as a function of CG, the capacitance of the coupler. And so we went de we decrease CG. Uh, probably coupling constant is rapidly increasing, but the G minus, uh, this means that G minus prime does not uh, increase much. Uh, and the other strategy, oh, sorry, the other strategy is setting alpha close to one over M. It increases the, the abstract value of EJG4 over EJG2. It uh, represented like this as a function of N and alpha. Uh, this showed the plot of the probably coupling constant as a function of alpha for different and different curves corresponds to different n. Uh, let me focus on n equal two case. Uh, for larger alpha than some point, uh, it rapidly increases, and uh, this straight line corresponds to n equal one. That is the uh, previous, uh, the probably coupling constant for the previous coupler, original version. So uh, by setting the alpha. Uh, larger than uh, some value, or for example 0.4, uh, we can realize the probably coupler with a larger coupling constant than the previous one. But uh, in theory, one one, we, when we set alpha exactly equal to 1 over n, it uh, diverges. So we do not set it, and uh, we do not set it to exactly equal to 1 over n, but it is enough. Uh, setting alpha close to one over n to obtain the larger coupling constant than the previous one. And this is summary. Uh, anyway, that it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Uh, two questions. Uh, thank you for your presentation. First one is, uh, do you use shear full of transformation to get the effective spin model Hamiltonian? For body? Spin model Hamiltonian. Uh, the, the so, you mean, so you mean from here to here? Like uh, what uh, mathematic tools do you use to get the uh, effective Hamiltonian? The like four body terms? Oh. Or you sure for wolf transformation, uh, something like that? Uh, so, uh, thank you for the question. So, you mean the, this third step, what we did? Yeah, like, yeah, from uh, the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, we transformed the. Uh, uh, yeah, we used the, something like a strip of wolf transformation. Uh, but the nonlinear terms, uh, we are suffering from nonlinear terms. So, some terms remains, does not vanish. But we use rotating wave approximations and uh, vanish them and then obtain this one. But so, so, sorry, it's a brief explanation. And yeah, anyway, this is the answer so far. Okay, so thank you. Another question is uh, uh, how do you measure the JPOs? What is the computational basis? It's not a persistent current uh, state, right? What measured? 
uh, how, how do you measure JPO dispersive measurement or uh, oh, squid? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, we do not cause in, in this study, in this theoretical study, we do not consider the measurement itself. We only consider the uh, state in the circuit. So uh, I, we, we ignore it. The like uh, if you define JPO as a qubit, some cat, cat state qubit, uh, uh, how do you measure it with dispersive uh, uh, measurement or uh, that is uh, that is related to the experiment. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, there is a conventional way to measure the state in the JPO. And so, yeah, it is not our original work anyway. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Is this coupling also tunable uh, to the negative values or and can you turn it off? Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what, where, where is your point there? No, it's just a general question. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean the G4 may become negative, right? Yeah. And if you can tune it uh, negative or turn it off? Uh, yeah. Uh, in gen uh, this is the figure for G4, but this shows the abstract value. But uh, in fact, it decreases like that. and. For larger alpha, this value is negative. But we can tune the, we can tune, we can change the, uh, such a sign negative to positive with other method. Sorry, I do not, I did not mention that. But anyway, so we do not uh, focus on the sign in this presentation. Because you don't need it for the LH set architecture, or why? Uh, yeah, for the. At least for the LHC architecture, uh, the positive coupling constant is needed. Ah, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Last yeah, quick question. Uh, okay, so I understand that you, you need to rely on some resonance condition uh, of the four JPOs in order to remove uh, residual two body coupling terms. Uh, and but when when you actually do annealing, you you uh, need to implement like the transverse terms or something, and and can you keep that resonance condition and, oh. at mm -hmm. all times during when you do annealing? Yeah, uh, it might be a little related to the experiment, but anyway, uh, in theoretical viewpoint, uh, uh, for annealing. We uh, vary the amplitude of uh, sorry. I show the first. And we, uh, here is a pump field, and we change, we change, we vary, uh, we change the amplitude of the pump field. This is the annealing in for this qubit for this setting, and uh, res resonance. Uh, so. Yeah, I said the special relation to the frequencies are considered. That is the frequencies for the pump field. So uh, we believe that we can keep the, such a relation even in annealing, because the annealing, when uh, during annealing, we only tune the amplitude. Um, but, but you also need to set, uh, set independently the, the qubit field, right? Uh, Sure. Like in order to program arbitrary problems into your hardware. Uh, so, uh, you mean the, for in, in, in the spin terminology, the JIJ like that? Sorry, I don't. I mean, not understand you. Yeah, yeah. So, so in the H, uh, LHC, it would be the single qubit uh, longitudinal uh -huh. field. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That that needs to be programmed for for different mm -hmm. to map to different problems, right? Uh yes. So 
uh, so in, in my setting, uh, we do not consider such a uh, additional coherent driving term. But uh, I, yeah, we just it is independent of the our argument. I, I mean, the, uh, if we also use the such a coherent driving, our argument uh, holds. But, but sorry, it is not. Oh yeah, I think it kind of answers the question. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Smart. Sorry for my problems. So now it is the time for the break. We again meet at uh, eleven twenty. Yeah, eleven twenty. Recording stopped. <laughs>